give myself, I give myself to you. We can all sing that together. My life is not my own. Life is not my own. To you, to you I, belong. I belong. And I give myself, I give myself, I give myself to, you. to you. We can keep that going right there. My life is not my own. Stay right there.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all heard. You all heard her. She said, let the redeemed. Is there anybody in here been redeemed? Oh, I feel like shouting right now. Is there anybody been redeemed? The word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say hallelujah. Lift up your voice in the house of God. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Y'all, I'll praise him if I have to praise him by myself. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. We bless God. We're thankful to be back in the pleasant green we're thankful to be back and we praise god for you amen we are blessed to be um back with the family amen amen let's praise god and give god another big gigantic hand for all that god has done amen we bless god for the choir who has rendered a service amen this morning bless god for them amen they've done such a magnificent job and we are also proud of them as they sang their hearts out at central baptist church amen amen they showed up and they showed out and we're so blessed amen uh, for them amen we also bless God for the service of Mark Collins Jr. Amen. Deacon Mark Collins Jr. Amen. It is his 90th birthday. Amen. Hey, Y'all can do better than 90. Amen. 90 years of age. Amen. The Bible says that we get three score and ten, but by reason of strength, you get a little more. So he's gotten overtime, and we bless God, and I pray that, that I can get a little overtime. Amen. Amen. The, the story goes that a uh, man knocked on the door. Death knocked on Methuselah's door. He was 969 years old when death knocked on his door. Amen. He says, so soon? Amen. So we bless God for the time that God has given each one of us. Amen. Amen. God, now we pause to tell you thank you. We appreciate this time that we spend behind this thy sacred desk. God, I ask that someone's life be changed by what you've given me to share with God's people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would, go with me to the New Testimony of the Bible. Mark, the eighth chapter. We'll begin reading at the twenty second verse and conclude at the 26th verse. This is an account that you would only find in Mark. It reads on this wise. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring 
a blind man unto him. And he besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him into town. And when he had spat in his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw as he ought. He looked up and said, I see men, but I see them as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored. And I saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. God bless you. And I want to use for a theme for the time that we share together a need for a second touch. A need for a second touch. My brothers and sisters, as we know, there are many diseases, disorders, maladies, sicknesses that can impair and inhibit our sight. These diseases can hamper and, hi and hinder our vision. Some of these ailments can even blind us if left untreated. Unfortunately, there are some of us who struggle right now with eye issues. I am one. Without my glasses, I can hardly see my hand before my face. Don't worry, I'm driving, but I have on my contact lenses. Brothers and sisters, Many of us struggle with exasperating and aggravating illnesses and ailments that blur our vision. Macular degeneration is the loss of vision in the center of the vision field and it is damage to the retina. If you will, walk with me for a moment. I promise I'll get to uh, my text. Macular de degeneration can make it difficult or impossible to read or to recognize faces. This inconvenient infirmity creates a circle of blindness in the middle of your eye, yet it teases you with just enough peripheral vision to carry on with simple daily tasks. This makes the praise so much more authentic when I hear the little children sing the hymn that I got eyes and I can see. And my brothers and sisters, it is a blessing to be able to see. Glaucoma is an ailment which is caused by increased pressure within the eye and hypertension. Glaucoma is just the opposite because it causes one to have tunnel vision with no peripheral capacity at all. Having glaucoma is somewhat like looking through a peephole, only being able to see one thing and nothing else outside of that frame of vision. There are more uh, familiar causes of vision loss which we uh, understand as cataracts. Cataracts are the clouding of the lens inside of the eye which leads to decreased vision. 
cataracts cause more blurred lines than Robin Thick. You'll get that on the parking lot. Cataracts can become so severe, so serious, that one may only be able to perceive light in general direction, nevertheless cannot distinguish a tree from a man. I'm getting to my text. The American Association, uh, Medical Association would label this handicap as being legally blind. This is the condition in which we find our headlining character in our text. This is the situation that we find him in our feature presentation. The man in the text and the man in this account is referred to simply as the blind man. Contextual clues lead us to believe that he was legally blind and spiritually blind. Brothers and sisters, the text point us to the fact that he had dim vision. He had dim sight. He couldn't hardly see. And I just want you to understand that it's not all about the physicality, but it was also about his spiritual well-being. And I just want, uh, and I believe that it is appropriate to say here that if you have dim, hampered sight, then it is impossible for you to have innovative vision. The first thing, my brothers and sisters, that I see about this account is that after the crowd brought this man to Jesus and begged Jesus to touch him, Jesus in turn takes this man by the hand and leads him out of the city. Y'all praying with me this morning. Jesus takes this man out of the presence of other people and he leads him to a place where he can spend some alone time with the blind man. Someone might be curious and wondering why did Jesus take him out of the city? And I tell you that Jesus took this blind man out of the presence of other people because my brothers and sisters, he was trying to have some intimate time. He was about to do something very intimate in the life of this man. I wish I just had one more praying saint in here. Every now and then, brothers, and sisters, what I want you to realize that sometimes Jesus has to take you out from other folks so that he can touch you in such a way, so that he can heal you in such a way, so he can reach down far enough to bring you out of the mucky, the mire situation that you're in. Sometimes God has to take you out of the presence of other folks. Jesus takes this man out of the presence of other people where they were alone. Somebody is curious, brothers and sisters. Look at the text. It is just not me, brothers and sisters, but look at the text. What Jesus did, he spat in his hands and he put the spit in his eyes. You see, sometimes when God delivers you, he can't do it in front of other folks. <laughs> Jesus uh, took this man, and brothers and sisters, and he spat in the man's eye. Jesus wanted the blind man to have intimate time so that Jesus can infuse him with the element by which his sight could be recovered. My brothers and sisters, uh, all who are spiritually blind need such a time with the Savior. Lord, have mercy in here. If you are experiencing any spiritual blindness, you need that special and intimate time with the Savior. If you don't see a need for Bible study, 
you might need that intimate time with the Savior. If you don't believe that you need to be in Sunday school, you might need that intimate time. If you don't believe that prayer changes things, you might need that intimate time with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, uh, someone might be curious and wondering why did Jesus take him out of the city, but the Lord needed to be alone with him. Jesus spit in the eyes of the blind man. Now we all know that for someone to spit in your eyes seems to be a disgusting and repulsing act. But what this says to me is that in order for some of us to be right here where we are right now, Jesus had to touch you when you were in some disgusting and some despicable and some nasty situations. God had to do something. Some of us got amnesia. We've been walking with the Bible under our arms all our lives, but you remember when God had to touch you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, sometimes Jesus can do something so personal, so private, so particular, so peculiar, uh, and so individual in our lives. It can only be between you and the Lord. You know, testimony has its place, but there are some things that God delivered you from that you ought, that it ought to stay between you and the Lord. I've been many in many of church service and folk just wanted to get up before the congregation and tell the congregation everything that they've been through. But brothers and sisters, what I share with you, there are some things that you've been through that is only between you and the good Lord. Folks are just folks. Folk might look at you different. If I tell you everything in my life, y'all might not want me to preach to you. And if you told me everything in your life, I might not want to preach to you. Brothers and sisters, some things ought to stay between. Don't tell me. Some things don't tell me. Jesus told the blind man, he said, don't tell anybody. He, he didn't want the man running around talking about, hey, Jesus, spit in my eyes. Yes. Somebody might say, oh, you nasty. Somebody might have said, that's disgusting, and you're nasty for allowing him to do that. Some things, again, brothers and sisters, we've got to keep to ourselves and know that Jesus is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. No! That the Lord is able, and he'll do just what he said he'll do. You know, some folks can't handle your testimony. It's an unfortunate, but some people will never see you the same after you share something with them. That's why Richard Smallwood singles, they says, you don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. And I shall never forget what the Lord is doing for me. Every testimony is not to be told. For to tell it is to taint it. To say it is to stain it. To proclaim it is to pollute it. So my brothers and sisters, it is important in the life of the believer that we get some private time with the Lord. We need meditation and prayer. Jesus took this man on to the outskirts, to the peripheries of town. Henry Nouwen says in his book, 
creative ministry that through meditation we escape to the peripheries of life. It's good to steal away and every now and then go down on your knees and tell God have mercy please and come see about me. I'm so glad the seasoned saints gave me my foundation when they said have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about your trouble. I don't know about you, but every now and then I like to steal away and get into me a secret closet and I like to tell the Lord everything. Oh, I'm in here by myself. Ah, we need steal away. Back to the text. We see where when they were alone, Jesus again spit in his hands and touched the man's eyes. And Jesus asked the blind, blind man, can you see? The man in turn said, I see people, but I see them and they look like trees. Immediately, we understand that there is something wrong because he sees people, but yet he sees people and they look like trees. I see something. The man in turn said again uh, that they look like trees walking. I see something confusedly and obscurely. I don't see clearly for I see what I think must be men and yet so dimly that they look like trees. This indicates that the blind man either was not born blind because you had to know what a man looked like. Perhaps he was not born blind, but he had some limited degree of sight all along. And if he already knew how men and trees looked, that means he had some, uh, some sight. But the text says he didn't see like he ought to have seen. I'm about to walk down our row in a minute. Some of us see. But we don't see. Help me, Holy Ghost like we ought to see. Brothers and sisters, then Jesus touched and laid hands on him again. But this time, Scripture tells us that his sight was restored. Now here comes the big question. Here comes the great inquiry about the story. Why did Jesus have to touch this man uh, hardened for a second time in order for his sight to be restored? What happened to Jesus' power? I thought he was the omnipotent. I thought he was the all-powerful. Why in the world did the Lord have to touch this man for a second time? Was Jesus having a bad day? Did he forget to eat his Wheaties this morning? Did he lose his miracle mojo, his divine dazzle, his godly groove? Was Jesus in a supernatural slump? What happened that this man was not restored the first time? Well, what we must understand here is that even while Jesus uh, was healing folks, he is always looking to teach us something. In other words, while he was healing this man, he still was teaching his disciples. I wish I had some help here. He, he was touching this man, and he was still teaching us something. While blindness... My brothers and sisters appears to be a description of the blind man's physical condition. It also points out that he was spiritually blind. He already had an initial touch from Jesus. He could see, but he could not see as clearly as he ought to have seen. 
Well, where are you going with that lecture? Many times in our lives, we may have had an initial experience with Christ. Talk to me, somebody. We might have had an initial experience with Jesus Christ. We might have gotten baptized at 10 years old. We, we, we might have started serving in the church at 12 years old, singing in the choir, working on the usher board, working with the deacons, my brothers and sisters. We might have been going to church all of our lives. We've been serving the church and been here for 30 or 40 years, brothers and sisters sisters. We have gone to the National Baptist Congress. We go to Sunday school. We go uh, to Bible study, my brothers and sisters, but yet we still don't see like we ought to see. Therefore, we are in need of a second touch from the Lord. You know, it's possible for us, my brothers and sisters, to have been touched by Christ when we were on the morning bench. But still, 20, 30 years later, we need a second touch from the Lord so that we might see how we ought to see. So that we might talk how we ought to talk. So that we might give how God initiated for us to give so that we might go to where God has called us to go. Sometimes every now and then in our lives, we need a second. Somebody said, well, Reverend, where you see that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. Brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes on our Christian journey, uh, our eyes may become dim. And sometimes we need the Lord to caress our eyes so that we can continue on our journey and see how we ought to see. My brothers and sisters, many times we need a second touch from the Lord. And because our eyes have become dim and lost innovation. And brothers and sisters, look at the b biblical text in 1 Samuel 3 and 2. Eli's, it says, Eli's eyes became dim. As God was about to use a fresh and innovative look at ministry through the eyes of Samuel. Uh, it happens again in Genesis 27 and 1. Isaac's eyes grew dim as he did not have the spiritual discernment enough to consecrate Jacob, giving him the birthright. Dim eyes will cause you to miss some things. You know, on this Christian journey, we can't afford to, for our eyes to be dim. We need a fresh touch from the Lord. Now, wait a minute. This does not suggest that age causes one to be spiritually blind. You can be 190 years old and have fresh eyes. I'm talking to somebody in here. You, you, it does not mean that age causes you to uh, have dim eyes. But it does suggest that if we are not extremely careful to get a refreshing touch from Jesus Christ every now and again, our eyes can and will grow dim. And in the church, the church can't afford to have parishioners with dim eyes. For ministry can be hindered if the church uh, has dimmed and spiritually cataract-coated eyes. We can get caught in a quicksand of spiritual stagnation and find ourselves saying, well, we ain't never done it like this this before. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we've got to get to a place where we rely upon the spontaneity of Jesus Christ. When your eyes grow dim, 
we see new ministries and new ways of worship as a threat rather than the building blocks onto the kingdom of God. I'm talking to somebody. Thomas saw Jesus as a leader, but he didn't see Jesus as the resurrection. I pray that this ain't missing, y'all. He was a disciple. Thomas was right with Jesus. He saw Jesus as a teacher, but he did not see him as the resurrection. You know why? Because in the text, he said, I don't believe he got up. Unless I can touch his hands and his side, I ain't going to believe it. There are many folks walking right with Jesus. Still can't see him for who he is. Nicodemus saw Jesus as a teacher, but he didn't see him as the Savior. Pilate saw Jesus as the King of the Jews, but he didn't see Jesus as King of Kings. Elijah Muhammad recognized Jesus as a prophet, but he did not recognize Jesus as the Son of God. I'm closing now. But my brothers and sisters, any level of blindness can alter our direction. And brothers and sisters, we need to be able to ask the Lord to touch our eyes. My grandfather told me a story that he drove up to Chicago for a funeral. But oh Lord, uh, he forgot to tell his passengers uh, that his eyes had begun to wax and glaze over and become dim. And he drove all the way up to Chicago in the daytime with no problem. But on the way back, uh, the night began to fall. And oh Lord, uh, instead of asking uh, somebody for help, he just kept on, he kept on driving. Do I have any witnesses here? Little did, little did he know uh, that while he decided uh, to keep on driving, uh, he was missing uh, some very important signs. What I'm sharing with you, uh, if you don't have clear eyes, uh, there are some signs in life uh, that you are going to miss. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that the Lord uh, gives us uh, a fresh view uh, and the Lord gives us a, a fresh touch. I'm so glad that the songwriter says, oh, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, Lord, I was blind, but now I see. Is there anybody in here? ever been in the dark didn't God shine his light I'm out of here now but one songwriter says that I was sinking deep in sin far from the shore but I'm so glad that the Lord oh Lord I'm celebrating now I'm so glad that the Lord reached way, way down to pick up a blind man like me. Oh Lord, I can remember years ago, I was just blind and I could not see. One Wednesday, one Wednesday, is there anybody here know that the Lord opened your eyes? Is there anybody here know that the Lord made your way. Is there anybody here know that the Lord healed you when you were sick? The old preacher says he's a rock in a weary land. He's bread in a starving land. He's water 
water when I'm thirsty. He's a liar in a courtroom, a doctor in a sick room. If you know the Lord has done anything for you, you ought to get up on your feet and tell the Lord thank you. No, he's all right. Is there anybody here know that the Lord is all right with you? He died on Calvary's cross. He died on Calvary's cross. He died on Calvary's cross, but he didn't stay dead. Somebody told me, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they told me that one day they spit on my Lord. One day they nailed his hands to the cross. One day he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. He gave up the ghost. He died. But Mark told me this, uh, the story does not end there. He died, but early, 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 one Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Is there anybody here know that he got in your situation? Is there anybody here know that you were blind? And you could not see the Lord. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Someone needs a touch. You know, in times like these, you need a savior. The door of the church is open. Praise God. Praise God. The door of the church is open. There's someone right now struggling. You need a savior. Oh, you ought to trust him. Oh, you ought to trust him. Oh, hallelujah. There's somebody in here right now struggling with that decision. But while we sing this hymn, I want you to consider your life in eternality. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. The Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I and look, not only this, not only trust in them, but I'm going to stay on the back. You got to persevere. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield till I die. He's the uh, nephew of, of, of the late brother Willie Hart. Um, and he says, hey, he says that he, ba he was baptized in. He's been going to various churches over the years, but he wants to come back home and get the second touch. Praise God for the second touch. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, church family. We have uh, two sisters that are candidates for baptism. Would you please stand? And these happen 
to be. Amen. Amen. This is this is Taylor Reed. She is 14, and her sister Maya Reed. She's 13, and they are great granddaughters of Mark Collins, Deacon Mark Collins, and, and Mark Collins the second, his his granddaughters. Stand up, Mark. They're his granddaughter, great granddaughter to Deacon Mark Collins. So uh, we're going to uh, have a counselor talk to you uh, after the pastor makes remarks, if he'd like, and then of course you'll be notified about when and, and, and how to prepare for a baptism. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. 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 What we want to do, we're going to, uh, is the pool prepared for next Sunday baptism? Okay. Let, let's prepare the pool. Amen. And what we want to do on next Sunday after benediction, we'll give you the right hand of fellowship, all three of you. Amen. 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 Y'all, it's still worship. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the praise.